let's start. So before, uh, um, we, before we start, let me introduce myself. I'm Louis Delabar, I'm solution architect at GetWatcher and also an evangelist. Uh, before explaining how the, the webinar will, will, uh, will be, uh, uh, I would say, executed, uh, I would like to thank you for being uh, in this uh, webinar. Um, just as a reminder, um, you will be able at the end of the session to ask questions thanks to the uh, question folder. I believe that you have it on, on your screen. Um, and uh, I'll try to, to uh, of course, to answer to this question at the end of the session. So the, the, the content of this webinar is how to detect a threat hijacking attack. So uh, let's uh, um, start with this explanation. So um, I believe that uh, we will start this webinar with five slides. One uh, about the, uh, the attack itself, then about the, uh, the, um, the explanation of the attack, and then we do a, a demo. So the webinar will be uh, uh, split in three phases, five slides, a demonstration, and at the end, the Q&A uh, session. So I believe that uh, in order to understand uh, the demonstration, it's worth to have an explanation of the attack itself. So what type of attacks are we talking about? So um, you, I'm sure that you, you are aware that today, uh, a lot of different attacks are using the email vector. Uh, email vector is still number one uh, vector for the attacks. But in this very specific case, so the threat hijacking attack, it's a, um, a little bit slight different uh, type of attack because it's not only using the email, but the idea is to use existing email into the, uh, into the email system. So the first step of the attack is to compromise an email account. And thanks to this uh, account compromise, the attacker would be able to use existing email to reply to this ex existing email and inject into the email, this new email, malicious uh, web document, a uh, malicious attached document, whatever uh, malicious link. Uh, the idea is again to lower, uh, you know, your your natural defense because you are re you are uh, replying to a, an existing conversation with your colleagues or your peers. So first phase, compromise an account, and then send uh, a reply to existing email with a malicious payload. So that's, that's quite efficient attack. And as uh, Loic uh, from Proof, uh, Proofpoint was saying, uh, the fact that we, we integrate the attack or the attackers integrate the attack into existing conversation will um, uh, increase the efficiency of the attack. So be careful, even when you receive an email from your peers or your colleagues, you need some uh, mechanism and I, I will explain it. You need some mechanism to detect the malicious, uh, um, I would say, attachment, even if the email is, is sent by your friends or your colleagues. So, uh, as I said uh, before, we do the the, uh, the demonstration itself. I want to explain uh, how the demonstration will be uh, will be done. Uh, number one, the context of this uh, dem demonstration. It's a real attack. It's a, it's an attack made by a group called TA551 or Shatak. This group is well known since 2016, uh, and are quite, uh, they are still, I would say, active, uh, unfortunately, I would say. So uh, they are using, as I said, hijacking attack, but they are also using, in this type, type of attack, a, a platform which is called Sliver, and Sliver is a cross-platform framework, as a, uh, we can compare it to uh, Cobalt Strike, for example. So it's a post-exploitation uh, uh, platform, and this platform is open source, it's cross-platform, it works on Windows, Linux, or other type of operating system. And uh, this cross-platform framework is also using different protocols, could be HTTP, HTTPS, DNS, and mutual uh, encryption or TLS uh, session, uh, you know, to communicate with the compromised uh, systems. This uh, attack or this uh, framework called Sliver, again, is quite efficient because it's also using, uh, you know, evasion mechanisms. So it's very difficult to detect. It's very efficient regarding, you know, the payload exchange between the framework and the compromised system. But it's also um, uh, quite interesting because uh, for any of the attack, 
for any customers that was attacked, the certificate, the encryption, the uh, um, uh, characteristic of the attack is different. So it, it's very difficult to detect a sliver uh, platform, even if you have some reputation or fingerprinting mechanism in place. So demonstration will be done in, in four phases. The, the first phase, I will uh, use a, a platform that we provide to our customers uh, to provide some intelligence to them to explain who is TA551, so Shattack Group. Uh, in the second phase, I will launch itself the attack. So we replay a pickup file, uh, which is the real attack uh, on the system. Uh, the third phase of the, uh, of the uh, demonstration will be uh, the usage of our uh, technology called uh, IonIQ. It's an NDR solution, so network detection and response solution to detect the attack and to understand that you are facing a, 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 a TA551 attack or an hijacking attack using Sliver platform. And also at the end, I will also demonstrate the fact that it's not only about detection, it's also about using metadata that we are collecting uh, from the network uh, to understand uh, you know, the attack and to, to understand the context of the attack. So in a nutshell, who is the attacker? We execute the attack itself, then uh, we'll uh, analyze the detection made by our solution called IonIQ, and at the end, uh, also a kind of demonstration of the uh, different metadata that we collect. So without uh, further ado, let me uh, switch uh, to the uh, demonstration itself. So we share my screen. I hope you can see my screen. Um, so um, I forgot to mention one important thing. During this demonstration, I will only use GetWatcher technology. We're not using other uh, solutions. We're not using specific, uh, uh, um, I don't know, uh, third-party solution. It's uh, a combination of different solutions provided by GetWatcher. The first solution uh, that I want to, to uh, demonstrate is called Last InfoSec is what we call it in the domain, in the cybersecurity domain, cyber threat intelligence. We collect information coming from different open source, uh, could be uh, Twitter, could be news group, could be uh, the dark web, could be uh, also, uh, you know, uh, uh, sandboxing technology uh, uh, on the internet. The idea is to have in the same platform every intelligence you can collect about attackers, uh, what we call observa observables or indicators of compromise. So it could be domain, URL, IP address, IP port address, and so on and so on. So we collect everything in one huge database and we give access to our customers to this intelligence. So for example, if I want to showcase what we collect about TA551, I can do a search on TA551 I have a result uh, called intrusion set, which is a, a group of attacker. And when I click on it, we'll gather all the information we have regarding this group of attacker. So uh, we can see here that we have different reports because we, have, we are every day uh, generating some new reports about this group of attacker or about the new indicators of compromise. We can see here a very short uh, description of the group. So we know it's a financial motivated group. They are active since 2016 and mostly since 2018. Uh, and for example, we are also here uh, mentioning different source of information. So it could be uh, indicate, it could be tweeters again, could be, uh, for example, unit 42, could be the Maitri attack, uh, it could be other type of source that we uh, uh, collect in order to have in, in one place all this information. If I go in detail regarding uh, this group, I will see that uh, uh, for this TA551 group, I collect about 8,000 indicators of compromise. Again, could be IP address, domain, URL, and so on. 28 different attack patterns, and eight malwares are, I would say, connected to this group. So it means that since 2016, they have used eight different types of malware to compromise uh, different uh, old uh, targeted targets. Sorry, so you can you can see here a kind of timeline. 
you see here different I would say techniques, uh, TTPs, uh, and so on that were, I would say, used by this group to attack their targets. So the last one is the usage in, in September of QuackBot. But in previous, you have seen, for example, that they are using a uh, HTA attack uh, of a Microsoft file to execute malicious activity. Uh, they are also using other techniques like URL sniff, spear phishing attachment, and so on, and so on. So why this information are very useful? For an analyst, when they get an, an alert, and I will explain it later in the demo, when you get an alert, the most important thing is to understand the alerts and to get the context of the alert. So thanks to this CTI platform, so last InfoSec, you will get every context you need regarding the alert itself or the attacker itself or the indicator of compromise itself. Uh, if I'm clicking on indicators, you can see here, that we have a long list of indicators, could be URL, could be hash file, could be IP and port address, and so on and so on. All these uh, indicators are related to TA551 and different malware and techniques they were using to attack their targets. So again, very useful, simple to use, web-based, and every information in one place. So that's the, the, uh, first, the first step of the demonstration. The second one is I want to launch the attack itself. So our technology uh, is also able to replay some attacks. In that case, I will select an option to uh, replay the attack called Sliver. And this uh, attack, this pickup file that I'm, I'm replaying now, is not something that we have made us. But th there are some you know, websites on the internet where you can get some pick up file of real attack. So this is a real attack that we are replaying. And then I'm switching to the NDR solution in order to showcase how we will detect the attack executed by uh, this group. So here we have the home page of the solution with different alerts, of course. Uh, and uh, if I'm uh, clicking to another interface of the product, I will be able to gather some information here so there's a, a, a kind of a refresh, uh, auto-refresh technology where uh, from a technical view, you will detect or you will see all the detect detection made by our technology. Our technology, this NDR solution, is a combination of different engines. You have uh, 16 different anti-malware together, 16, one, six anti-malware in the box, not in the cloud, in the box. You have also, of course, a rules, uh, a static rules uh, detection engine. So with Suricata rules, it's a kind of next gen IDS. You have what we call code breaker. Code breaker is a way to detect shell code. And for for who uh, who don't know who is a, who, which don't know what what is a, call, uh, a shell code. A shell code is an exploitation of vulnerability. So it's very important to be able to detect it. And uh, you have also on top of it machine learning technology in order to detect very advanced type of attacks. So in a nutshell, you have different engines. Sigflow is the one about uh, uh, static rules. Malcore is the 16 anti-malware. And Codebreaker is the, the detection of shell code and AI on top of it. So in that case, I'm an analyst. What I can see here, I can see that I have different alerts, three types of alerts. Uh, a few seconds before, I have a, a, a code breaker alert. Someone is trying to exploit a vulnerability. And then, if I'm switching uh, my mouse over this, uh, these two peaks, I have another alert, which is Malcore. Anti-malware has detected a file, which is malicious. And you have also Sigflow, which is, you know, again, the static rule. So um, if I'm a, an analyst, in a few seconds, I can see that here I'm facing two alerts, apparently someone is downloading an executable file or a DLL in my uh, enterprise, in my infrastructure. So this is something quite dangerous. You know, someone has clicked on a link or has uh, executed a file. So we are downloading a, an executable file or a DLL file. Then I have also, as I said, Malcor, which is the anti-malware that has detected a Trojan. So we know that this file apparently is a Trojan, so we need to investigate, of course. And I also have code breaker, which is explaining me that someone is executing a shell code, which is, by the way, a Windows 64-bit type of shell code. 
So in one view, I understand that I have three type of attack in the same minute or in, in two minutes. So I will now investigate each of them. If I'm going to cut breaker, because I know that I have a cut breaker attack, I know that I have one shell code, and this is the internal IP address, so 10, 10, 20, 101, and this is the external IP address. If I'm going down, I can have some information regarding this shell code, this shell code, and uh, I can, of course, filter and get the message itself. So if I'm clicking on message, I will have exactly the alert sent by our technology. So here you have all the details regarding the alert, the IP address, the geolocalization, the fact that it's a, a shell code. Apparently, the attack was launched from Germany, and so on, and so on. I can also, if I want, uh, if I go back to the overview of this code breaker alert, I can, of course, filter a little bit uh, this uh, display. For example, I'm, I can ask the system to display only information, sorry, information coming from this internal IP address. So I make this filter permanent. And if I'm going now to the Malcor alert, I get, so the anti-malware attack, sorry. Oops, sorry. And it's not the, the right filter, sorry. So I have this filter, this Malcor attack. So we know that a file called ZES2, with this uh, SHA-256 or this MD5 SHA, MD5 SHA, MD5 uh, fingerprinting, sorry, was detected. And as I told you before, it's a, an executable file. We know that there is a Trojan into this, uh, uh, in, um, into this download. I would like to understand what happened. So now what I can do is I'm going back uh, to the message itself. So I will have um, the detail of the message itself. And one of the key and powerful uh, feature of the technology is what we call the flow ID. So if I want to filter on the flow ID, I can, I can do it, I can do it here. And if I'm going to this metadata, which is every information collected by the system, I can see that there is a, a request connected to this flow ID. And I know it's HTTP uh, request and, and file info request. I click on HTTP and I see immediately that this internal IP address, the same, has downloaded this Trojan from this website called carvedit.com. So I understand, I know that a few seconds before, and I have more information, of course, regarding the server, it's an Apache, uh, we know the version, we know, uh, of course, uh, that it was done through a GET, uh, of course, it was a 200 status code, so they succeed to, to download uh, the, the file, and this file, again, was, this is the request itself, the URL on, uh, where uh, they download this malicious file, and so on. Again, the internal IP address and the external IP address. So if I'm getting back to this uh, tactical view, I, I understand that someone internally has downloaded from carvedit.com a malicious file. And of course, I detected the file that it was an executable file. And uh, last but not least, uh, you, you, you will be able to uh, go back uh, to each of this information in the first interface. So if I'm going to Malcor, out, output or outcome, I can see here that the file that was executed here, I had the, it was infected. And last but not least, of course, I can download the malware if I want to do a reverse engineering of the malware. Uh, so the file itself, I can push uh, this, this file to another platform that we have provided by GetWatcher, which is a sandboxing technology where we execute the file because the first analysis done by the technology was static and used signature with these 16 different anti-malware. But here, with uh, this uh, other solution called uh, JBox, we execute the file. And you can see that the, the execution, the analysis in progress is in progress. Of course, I did it before, so I can save some time for you and see the report given by JBox. We can see here that the JBox has made a huge uh, analysis, static, dynamic, reverse engineering, and so on. And you get a full report with signature, what we call Kappa, which is the content of the file. The signature is what the file is doing. Apparently, we can see here that is using a packing. So that's something very 
malicious. Uh, we can see also that the file is executing run dll 32 And we, we have, of course, the pickup file that we can download to use it through Wireshark, for example. So back to the interface. We detect the traffic. We analyze the traffic. We detect the uh, shell code. We detect a file that was downloaded. Um, uh, and this file was detected as malicious. And we, we execute an additional analysis, a dynamic one, to get some additional information regarding the file itself. It's not, it's not finished uh, because the idea could be also to use this metadata to understand what this internal, uh, this internal IP address has made, I would say, uh, before and after the attack. So if I'm going, for example, to this metadata and to the, into the HTTP request, as I did before, Yes, I can select the IP address if I want, the source, the source IP address here. Sorry. I can add it on the filter as I did before. I make it permanent. And if I'm clicking on the, all the metadata I select, what happened? I can see that this, this uh, machine, as we know, download through HTTP the malicious file. But then we have this uh, TLS connection so encrypted connection to another website so if i'm clicking on tls still with this source ip address filter i know that apparently ruvejo is the website that this internal ip address that that was compromised before is connected to through a tls traffic so back back to the um uh, cti i could also go back there and say okay I have a, a, a website, which is ruvejo.com. I can make a search. Why not? Here, ruvejo.com. Of course, it could be made automatically, huh, but I'll, I'll make it manually to, to showcase. Oh, I have a result. I know that apparently that this domain name uh, is well known, is part of the intelligence. If I'm clicking on it, what happened? I will get some information very soon. Sorry. Listing for set, sorry. Maybe I do a refresh. Yeah, so we have here a report. We have here a report. If I'm clicking on a report, I will immediately understand that the report that we, we, we created, sent to our customers, is talking about the malware used by TA551, and they are using the platform called Sliver. So what does it mean? It means that for me, in a few seconds, I was able to understand that this internal IP address, this internal IP address, let me just remove the filter. Yes, so this internal IP address has downloaded a file from carvedit.com, and this file apparently is the executable for Sliver. Then the, 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 the internal uh, laptop was compromised, and then we have seen this TLS communication, and we see it in the in the, the report that TLS communication is a C2 communication from a compromised website. So we have a clear understanding of the attack. And with metadata, we also know uh, what type of traffic then the, 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 the laptop, the internal desktop or endpoint is, is doing. So we have a clear understanding of the attack or and the context. So uh, as a sum, as a summary of the demonstration. We execute an attack. We detect thanks to different detection engines, so Sigflow, Malcor, and Codebreaker, and AI on top. Uh, but that's not the object, the, the subject of the content of, of this uh, webinar. Uh, we detect the attack. We fully understand what was the attack, uh, what they were doing, what type of uh, infection we are facing. So apparently a sliver infection. We know who is attacking us. So apparently TA five by one. And thanks to the uh, intelligence, we know uh, who, how, and we can make other search to understand maybe if there are other, uh, I would say, endpoints in the company that were compromised using another technology. So um, getting back to uh, the presentation itself, sorry, I'm stopping sharing. 
So getting back to the uh, to the uh, sorry the, the the webinar itself, uh, I think it's time for the presentation. We are at the tip of the half an hour. So let me switch the question uh, um, folder. So you have a folder to ask question if you want. I give you a few minutes to ask a question. Okay, so apparently, uh, I hope that the presentation and the demonstration was clear enough. Um, I would like to thank you for attending to this webinar. Uh, I hope that it was uh, interesting enough uh, to, uh, to motivate you to go to our website uh, to understand and to read additional information regarding GetWatcher, different technology, detection, uh, CTI, and also uh, sandboxing. Uh, and of course, uh, we uh, as a team are available for any request uh, in the future. Thank you so much and uh, talk to you soon, I hope.